From the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 13. Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. From a poem entitled Haiku for Gardeners. He goes to the lake, finds a boat beached on the shore. The crowd waits, eager. What word will they hear? What deep message awaits them? He tells them stories. He calls them parables. He wants to get them thinking, pondering kingdom. There is an old gardening proverb that runs at sowing time. One for the mouse, one for the crow, one to rot, one to grow. In today's parable, referenced by Andrea and shared by Batsy in the reading, the sower is generous, profligate. Would an experienced man of the land, eking out a precarious existence, wantonly throw seed amongst the rocks and thorns and pathways? Who sows with such excess, such uninhibited, childish extravagance? Does Jesus mean to make his listeners laugh? Again, haiku for gardeners. A sower went out to plant, eager and with hope. He cast seed widely. What might it produce? That, friends, is the mystery. Depends where it lands. The seed is good news, the gospel of the kingdom. Not all receive it. The preceding chapters of Matthew that we followed over recent weeks have steadily highlighted the receiving of Jesus and the rejecting of Jesus. Disciples about to be sent out to tell of the kingdom were warned by their master that there would be occasion when the peace they offered would be scorned by households and they must shake the dust from their feet as symbolic departure. Last week, preaching to the Galilean lakeside towns, Chorazin, Bethsaida, Capernaum, each compared unfavorably to the foreign places of Tyre and Sidon, where, though they were not his own folk, people had been open to Jesus. Locally, the response had been like children in the village marketplace. Asked to dance, they wouldn't join the fun. Asked to mourn, they wouldn't share the sorrow. So when Jesus spoke of hard places for seeds, he knew much about hard places. He didn't just tell the parable, he lived it. The next 15 chapters of the gospel show that Jesus keeps offering his word, keeps sowing himself, no matter how dry or rocky or thorny the ground. And his followers are called to do the same. This is our job, this is our calling to sow the seed and bear the heartache when it falls on rocky, arid, or weed-infested ground. Rejection of the message does not mean that the message is wrong. Rejection of the message does not mean that our own efforts are folly. This week, the funeral of one of our members was conducted in the London Scottish Chapel. He first started attending St. Columbus in 1965. Those who knew him were aware that latterly he endured a long and hard final road. Forced to give up activities and freedoms, even home, that had been long cherished. Meticulous and modest, faithful and thoughtful. 
he feared that in his life he had achieved little and that his faith was weak. Yet at his funeral, the chapel was full. We heard of a long professional life and the numerous organizations he'd supported in retirement. There were friends present from six decades previously. And from the family came warm and affectionate and authentic tributes about one who valued and nurtured the ties of kinship. Faithfulness ran like a thread through everything that was recalled. For me, it was a reminder never to underestimate the influence of humble perseverance, even wavering trust. The words of scripture chosen by the family for their response to his life, to his uncertainties. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. My guess is that the seed of the life that we remembered this week will continue to bring harvest in ways that we can never yet imagine. The sower that we were told about is willing to fling seed anywhere reminding us that the gospel is bigger than good business sense or common sense. It's bigger than just good soil. If the sower throws seeds anywhere and everywhere, then anywhere and everywhere is the arena of God's care and redemption. There is no place, no circumstance, no individual in which God's seed cannot take root. The late Anglican priest and Guardian columnist, David Bryant, described his first visit to a high security prison in the north of England some years ago. He went with considerable unease, fearful of what lay ahead in this unknown and near invisible world. Initially, things lived down to his expectations. The experience was unremittingly bleak. The queuing, the poverty of many of the visiting families, the rigors and indignities of the security. Bryant himself was visiting a prisoner who had committed serious and appalling crime. To his surprise, he found not a monster, but someone quite ordinary, hungry for news of the outside world. On the way out, Bryant engaged in conversation with a fellow visitor, a young woman. When she learnt that he was a priest, she opened up about her own circumstances. Her partner had served nine years for the murder of a soldier, killed in a drunken barroom fight. Now he was nearing parole, Her own family had disowned her. Do you still love him? Bryant asked. Yes, I won't give up on him. We are going to get married. And as the visitors were leaving at the prison reception area, another young woman arrived. Distraught because her train had been delayed, she had missed the window for visiting time and the system was not unnaturally unbending. The young woman collapsed into a chair, weeping. An older woman knelt on the floor and began to stroke her hair in long, comforting sweeps, murmuring quiet, unheard words of comfort, holding her in a Christ-like embrace. And Bryant concluded... I knew then that the love of God infused even this forsaken place, bringing with it the seeds of potential hope and redemption. And on his train ride south, as he passed the angel of the north, he said, it was a milestone for me. I had found God where I thought he could not be. The poet von Schiller wrote, 
the golden seeds thou trusted trusteth to the earth the golden seeds thou trusteth to the earth the story of the sower does not end with inhospitable soil the story of the sower ends with bushels of abundance it ends with the miracle a hundredfold harvest sevenfold would be a good harvest in the face of rejection and in the face of the realities of the world it is our job to trust and to preach and to labor for that miracle in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit amen <laughs>